and the last video, video five of this chapter, we're going to focus on two more proofs. We're going to look at a trapezoid proof and a kite proof. And the reason why I pick these two particular proofs is because, especially the trapezoid one, it's not very obvious how to prove that this thing is true. The kite one, I just wanted to do a kite example. And so I tried to pick one that maybe wasn't quite as obvious again. So before we really dive into the trapezoid proof, we need to do a little bit of some vocabulary here. And some of this we've already known, but maybe not everything here. In a trapezoid, our parallel sides we call the bases. When we did the area of a trapezoid, we would always add our two bases together in that formula. The other two sides that aren't parallel are called legs. And then probably the new term here would be base angles and leg angles. Okay, The leg angles basically hug each leg, right? Both of these angles together are leg angles, because right in between the leg angles is the leg. And in between the bases, let's say between this and this base, these two angles are base angles. So there's no such thing as a base angle, but there are base angles. They always have to be in a pair here. Because if you said, all right, is this angle a base angle or a leg angle? And if you notice the two arrows here, they're technically both. It's one of a leg angle and one of a base angle, which is why we can't refer to it as just a singular angle. Now, the proof we're going to look at for the trapezoid. We're going to start out knowing that we have an isosceles trapezoid. So I can go ahead and mark on this, and I'm going to assume that these are the bases here. So I'm going to assume that QR is parallel to TS, and since it's isosceles, QT is congruent to RS. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as my given, essentially, that QR is parallel to TS and QT is congruent to RS. And we're going to call that our given. You could also say it's, it's kind of like the definition of an isosceles trapezoid. We kind of talked about taking what it meant to be an isosceles trapezoid and defined it from that. But this will be good enough, good enough for us here. So now what I want to show is, is the base angles are congruent. And I'm only going to pick on one set of base angles because I could redo the proof with the other base angles and it looks essentially the same. Now, we're going to focus on these base angles. I want to show that angles T and S are congruent to each other. And this proof, out of all of the ones that you will have done or will have seen, is probably the most difficult one because it's not obvious at all how to do this because part of it involves a construction. And not really a construction with a compass and a straight edge, but really you have to draw in an extra segment in here that you probably wouldn't have figured out on your own. Okay. Now, the line that we're going to have to draw in here is we're basically going to construct a segment that is the same as QT. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that segment and really put it right here so that it coincides with vertex R. And so we get this other point right here that we'll call, what's next? We'll call point U, okay? Now, again, it's not obvious. And here's what we're really doing. We're saying construct segment RU that's parallel to QT. And the reason, and again, you won't have to worry about this, is we, we constructed it. We're going to make it happen. But here's the thing. We need it to be parallel. So I made this to be parallel. And technically, I need to put two parallel markings here. OK. So now I have this. And if I've made this parallel, then you might notice, well, what shape is really Q, R, U, T? Well, it's a parallelogram, right? Because we already knew the top and bottom were parallel, and I just constructed QT and RU to be parallel with each other, so I have two sets of parallel sides. Now, why is that important? Well, you'll see here. Notice that if these two are parallel, then I could take angle T, and I could talk about angle T right here. So these two angles, T and U, are really congruent to each other. And why are T and U congruent to each other? Because they are 
corresponding angles. Okay, so angle T is congruent to angle, now I can't just call that angle U, because technically I could be talking about this left side here, so let's back up a hair and call it angle RUS. And that's true because of the corresponding angle postulate. I have parallel lines, so I know that's true. Now, since QRUT is a parallelogram, we've already talked about in the last video is that the opposite sides of parallelograms not only are parallel, but they're also congruent. So we also technically know that RU is congruent to KT. Now, proof-wise, how would we really write that out? Uh, it would really rely on that other proof which starts to get a little hairy because you're not really going to be expected to do these types of reasonings in these proofs. Um, so here, we could just do this. We know KT is congruent to RU. And I know this is going to seem a little janky, but we'll just go with it. It's because QRUT is a parallelogram. Okay, so they're opposite sides, therefore they're congruent. Okay, now, this is leading us up to the big finale here. Notice, whenever I initially made this parallel line over here, what type of triangle that I have really created. I now have an isosceles triangle. So from the last chapter, besides two sides being congruent in an isosceles triangle, we also know that their base angles are congruent, which would be these two angles, angle RUS, and basically angle S here. So now we can say angle uh, RUS is congruent to angle S, and that was the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, we're almost there. We needed to show that T and S were really the same. Well, we have a connector. We know that T is the same as RUS, and we know RUS is the same as S, Therefore, we can bring together these two pieces and conclude that angle T is congruent to angle S. And you can say substitution, or really this is the transitive property. And we're done. We have shown that those base angles are congruent. Now, you might ask, what about angles Q and R? They're base angles as well. Don't we need to show that they're congruent? Yes, we could basically redo this entire proof but instead of this RU going the way that it is, we make it go a different direction, and we repeat the same proof, okay? We're pretty much good at this point. Um, another way we could really show that the other base angles are congruent is we could say, let's ignore now this piece. Now that we know T and S are the same, let's take this back. We'll say I'm not done. I know, you guys are just like, oh gosh. You just said you were done. I know. Who are you, Batman? Yes, I'm Batman. You're crazy. Come on. There we go. Okay. I can show that Q and R are really the same. Uh, if this is an a trapezoid, what do we know is true about the leg angle? We know the leg angles are supplementary because they're same side interior angles. So we can say angle R plus angle S equals 180 due to the same side interior angles theorem. Likewise, I can say angle Q plus angle T equals 180. Same reason, more same side interior angles theorem. I've got two things that are both equal to 180, therefore... They must be congruent to each other, so R plus S is the same as Q plus T due to the transitive property of equality, or substitution, you pick. And we know that S and T were already the same up here, so I'm going to swap out S with T, keep everything else the same. So there is true substitution. And once again, I have to shrink. I think. And now I can subtract angle T on both sides, and now I have concluded that R and Q, the other base angles, are congruent. So subtraction PE. 
And now, officially, I'm done. There, I've done both sets of base angles in the same proof. It wasn't crazy, but it was definitely longer than what we would typically do in a proof, which is why I wanted to do it together. Okay. The other proof we're going to look at involves a kite. So we have kite UVWX, so it's known to be a kite. And what I want to show is that the diagonals, WU, WU and XV, that they are perpendicular to each other. So I need to show that they really create 90 degree angles. So starting out here, I know this thing is a kite. So we could make this more legitimate. We could say, hey, this is a kite. That's what was given to us. Since it's a kite, what do we know about it? Well, we know that WX is congruent to WV. We also know that XU is congruent to UV. We can call that definition of a kite. And then, now what do we do exactly? You'll notice that I already have some of these triangles color-coded. Let me just back off of it, because we're not quite going to use that coloring yet. I might want to focus more on the entire top triangle and the entire bottom. If I can get a different color here, please. There we go. And you'll notice that right now, these two triangles, they have side-side in common. Where's the third side? Well, that would be WU. So we could use some CPCTC in here because we've got two triangles congruent by side-side-side. Where are we at? Where are we at? There we go. So let's say WU is congruent to WU by reflexive PC. And we may now state triangle WXU is congruent to triangle WVU by side, side, side. So what do I know in here now? Uh, well, I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. Why do I know that? So XWU is congruent to VWU. Well, that's some CPCTC action right there. I also know that these two angles over here are congruent to each other. So that would be angle X u w is congruent to angle v u w with some cpctc action i also know that angle x altogether and angle v altogether are the same i could write that out but it's not going to help me out in my next endeavor so i'll leave it alone so now i was afraid of that let's unlink this there we go let's take away those shadings now let's put these shadings back I'm going to now focus on these triangles. Is that what I wanted to do? Yes. Now, here's where the proofs are going to take a little bit of a turn here. Let me see if I can get just those pieces. Not quite. Move some stuff up and over. And shrink a dink it a little. There we go. Can I just grab you? somewhat pardon the interruption Doot. I know you guys are thinking like oh my gosh he's getting a lot of space here why is he getting a lot of space yeah we got a little bit more work to do okay now between these two triangles this piece is congruent to itself if I'm focusing just solely on that half the kite, right? So if I want to show these two triangles are congruent, if I could show that they are congruent, then that would mean that these two angles are congruent by CPCTC. And if they're congruent, notice together they make a straight line, which is 180 degrees. And when's the only time I'm going to have two congruent angles that add up to be 180 degrees is, oh, when they're 90, which means they're perpendicular. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be shooting for here now. So now I can say, well, I need a name for this. Let's call it Y the next letter that we're after here. We know that WY is congruent to WY through the reflexive property. And now, if you notice, both of these triangles have side angle side. So now, triangle WXY is congruent to triangle WVY. Again, by side angle side. Notice I'm not even using this part of the triangle over here. Not at all. 
I probably didn't even need to mention this piece of CPCTC information right there. Probably not even going to come in handy. We'll see. If I don't need it, I'll just go back and erase it and pretend it never happened. So, these triangles are congruent. So let's get some more CPCTC action going on in here. So I mentioned there that angle XYW is now congruent to angle B. No, nope, that's not a B. B Y, I know, there, B Y W because of CPCTC. So I'm really talking about these angles right here. Those angles are congruent to each other. Now we also know that angle X W Y plus angle V Y W equal 180 due to the straight angle postulate. And now all I'm going to do is make a little substitution. Instead of x, y, w, I'm going to pop in v, y, man, I say v and then I write a y, v, y, w into its place, keep everything else here the same. So I made a true substitution step here. And so now I've got two v, y, w's. So a simplify step, I just added like terms. Divide, oh, I almost did it again, v, y, w must equal 90 with the division property of equality. And so if angle VYW is a 90 degree angle, voila, I have perpendicular stuff going on here. I may now conclude that WU is perpendicular to XV. And those are my two diagonals. So I know that's true by definition of perpendicular. And then I'm done. Now you might ask, do I need to show that all four of these angles around point Y are 90 degrees? No. Just showing that one of them is means that it's perpendicular. So that's all I did there. Once I showed that v, VYW was 90, that's good enough to say that they're all going to be 90, essentially. Now let's go back just real quick. I know, I know, I know. This little piece of CPCT information, this piece, I really didn't end up using. So Technically, it could have been one line shorter than what it was in there. So I can now take all this, bump it up. So that was a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 line proof. Not too bad. That's, that's short, right? So that is finally all for video 5. We are done with the videos. And mm, are we done with proofs necessarily for the rest of the year? No, we're not. Not done. But the rest of the proofs that we'll be doing will be like this in class together where it won't be that bad. You won't be quizzed or tested over. But the proofs definitely give you some insight of why all this stuff is really, really true using all this other stuff that we've already learned. So I hope that some of you at least find this somewhat interesting. I certainly do. It makes me appreciate the geometry more that this stuff really is true and I know it's true based on all of this other information.